Hello everybody out there on the internet. Um, my name is Callum Pinkney. I am a Toronto based wedding photographer also using 17 hats like a lot of you all over the world. Uh, recently on the 17 hats user group that we have I've seen some questions, concerns, frustrations about how, what, why and who should be using life cycles essentially and I agreed that I would do a little video to maybe show you kind of what my life cycle is like um, in terms of helping my clients move through the inquiry phases and how it relates to workflows, client management, and uh, just saving you a little bit of time, hopefully. Uh, so as you can see here, I've got two, uh, two screens here that we're going to go over in the next couple minutes. Hopefully I'm not going to ramble too much. I don't do too many videos like this. Um, so I might um, just like I did, and I might make corny jokes. You never know. So life cycles is sort of an overview um, of your workflows um, and how they fit with all of your clients and where they are in different stages of contract negotiations, deposits, uh, meetings, reviews, depending on how you set them up. And this is going to look a lot different for people who are wedding photographers, doing it for the inquiry, to people who want a full life cycle stages for newborn photography, to virtual assistants um, or consulting firms, or anybody for that matter. It's going to look a little bit different and you have to tweak it to be efficient for you and fit your needs. So with that said, I'm going to show you sort of how I have things set up for wedding photography inquiries because that's what 99% of my business is. With that said, here we go. Life cycles, as 17 Hats defines it, represents a part of your project's timeline and shows you how far along a client is in a stage. So they've recommended a life cycle with five stages but you can customize it, as it says, depending on how long or short your projects are. And that's where I'm talking about maybe clients, uh, consulting companies, or newborn photography, or family photography, or graphic design uh, companies, or you know, sole proprietors. So with mine, I have five stages. I've gone ahead and, and sort of went with what 17 Hats recommends, and I think that fits me the best. So life cycles, as they as something has to sort of describe, it's about how far along a client is. And what I do is I'm going to compare that with two other very easy things I think that helped me understand it a little bit better. One would be like when you're playing a video game and you see that you're 60% through the video game. You know you've only got 40% left of that video game. Similarly, 75% saved progress. You know you've only got a little bit of the game left. You know that you're sort of towards the end. So it's a quick gauge of how far along someone is in a whole bunch of tasks that you need to complete to either make them a client, have them become a post client, or anything. Um, I'm, I'm running out of examples here. So another example would be a song. As you look down on your iTunes or Spotify, you can see that you're two and a half minutes through a five minute song, so you know you're halfway through. With that, let's take a look at the life cycle stages that I have set up. So I have five, we have new lead, inquiry, contract, pending deposit stage, deposit made. So let's talk about those. The new lead function, I have it set will start automatically, but as far as I can tell, I have to actually start this manually. Um, unless I'm missing something, I have to go in and add a life cycle, and I'll show you all about that when we get over to an actual test client, which is appropriately named Cal. So we have a new lead. I'll set that to start, and then what we have is I will know that when I've put them in, I'll have a new lead. And until I send an email, which is highlighted here, they will sit in the new lead phase. So if I forget to send them an email, uh, this new client or a new potential client, uh, I will never get to the inquiry phase. But the inquiry stage does start when any email has been sent. Any email. If I send an email saying, hi, sorry, can't help you because I'm booked, here's a whole bunch of photographers that I know in the city who might be available, it will start that inquiry stage. So it doesn't differentiate between appropriate emails or emails that are not the most uh, direct in your workflow. 
Um, so even if you go off course of the workflow and send a contract before you send a quote, it will still start up these phases. As far as I can tell, I'm trying to play around with them to see if there's any errors in terms of activating lifecycle stages, but I haven't had a lot of time. So after that's happened, that's usually when a couple is going to look at your packages, you're going to come back to them, you might meet for coffee, you will talk about things that you can do, they might add on some things to their, their potential package, in my case, and then you'll have to draft up a contract. All my contracts are sort of pre-made, pre-templated, and very rarely do I have to go in and edit them unless something wants to be added. It, it is pretty much template uh, boiler. Uh, there's nothing to change there. So the contract stage actually starts when any contract has been sent. So if I send that contract for them to review, ask questions about, I will know that I'm in the contract stage. And when we go through the test one, we're going to see all these light up. So you can get an idea of how far through you are with different ones. The pending deposit stage activates when any invoice has been sent. Any invoice. It doesn't matter. If you send them something that's not relevant by accident, it will probably light up here. Again, I haven't gone through that, but I'm, I'm checking for that sort of error uh, currently, and I, I guess I'll have to report back on that. But once you send that deposit invoice for their package, it's going to activate your deposit stage, or for me, that's what it will do. And then the deposit made cycle stage is going to activate once they actually make a deposit to my account um, through that invoice. Whether I input that manually uh, through bookkeeping or if they do it through, say, Stripe that's connected with 17 hats, it will automatically activate the deposit made phase. So as we see the last stage of this project, I have to manually complete it to say that it's absolutely done. Right now that's what works for me the easiest so I can keep control on things. It might work different from other people who um, they might have a different sort of company and when an event has actually been scheduled that's when the life cycle phase has completed. So with that said we're gonna flip over to an actual lead and see what that looks like in, in practical application. So here we are with a lead this is what your leads should look like now. Uh, we have Cal here with C. You can see they're in orange and they'll come up as a hot lead there. The event is a 17 hats video test, so let's just pretend that's a wedding um, that's happening today. And I've already gone ahead and gotten the workflow activated. So what we see here is a hot lead with weddings and we don't have a life cycle started up here yet. So let's activate that right now. If we go all the way down to add life cycle, we have an option to choose however many life cycles you have. I have one right now because that's all I've had time to really make, and I think that's all I'm going to really need uh, at this point, unless I move into other areas of business. So I'm going to select inquiry life cycle. Now that we're now that we have activated the inquiry life cycle, we can automatically see that new lead is active. And what all that's telling us is that there is a new lead, and you should know that because you've had to come in here and activate it. So if you were really busy, but you wanted to get this set up so when you came home from dinner with the kids and family, that you could get this going, you'd at least see that a new lead is sitting there, but you haven't sent out an email yet. If you recall, the inquiry stage is going to activate once I send an email. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Let's send an email to myself. Let's click on inquiry workflow. So when I go into my inquiry workflow for this potential client, you'll see it's at 0 of 8 up here in the corner. And I'm going to send out the test email. So it's an inquiry email with your packages, maybe ask them if they want to meet for coffee. And what you're going to see here when we go back to the inquiry is that the new lead has gone from green. That means it's complete now, and we're now in the inquiry stage. That means couples are going to be looking at your package, probably comparing you to other photographers, assessing whether they want to hire you. Okay, so as we can see, we have one of eight. We have the inquiry workflow up here. So let's go back now and see what happens when I actually move them from the inquiry stage to saying they want to book and I need to send them a contract. So maybe a week later, they come back and they'll say, okay, Cal, I'd like to book with you. 
Um, maybe let's just say in that time I've sent that follow-up email, which is fine. I'll delete that just for this purposes. And then I confirmed a meeting date. And then I also confirmed that I wanted to, they, that they wanted to book. So if I hit the wedding contract template, here's our wedding contract. Uh, very easy. Um, this is not my real contract, obviously, but it is uh, going to do for this purpose in effect. So we're going to go here. We're just going to say, okay, great. Um, I've sent the contract. Let's Okay, so as you can see here, we have the email. Let's just say test wedding. Whoa, I can't spell. Let's just say, so as you can see here, we have the test wedding. Let's just go ahead and hit send. I'm going to have a whole bunch of emails in my inbox from myself, but that's okay. Uh, as long as you guys can uh, learn and see how this all works. So we've sent the contract. So as we go back here, we now see that we moved into the contract stage of the life cycle. We've moved away from the inquiry stage. They're no longer inquiring, they want to book. Perfect. Okay, so now if we go back into the inquiry workflow, let's just say that this was signed, okay? I'm just gonna go ahead and delete it, but in every other effective case, they've signed it. So I'm just gonna delete it, just for the purposes of this. So, perfect. Now we can see the next thing to actually do once they've signed it is send an invoice. So if we go back here, this will activate once I send that invoice. I'm going to click back on my workflow. I'm going to go and uh, hit. So what I did here is I just very quickly uh, removed that invoice so it didn't actually generate an invoice and then I would have a, a little bit of a gap there in my invoicing number scheme. But you're going to have to just pretend that this would be an actual to-do item, just like the send email, and it would be sending the invoice. So we'd send the invoice there, and it'd be great. So we'd go back, and what we would see is, what we see, obviously, is a movement from contract to pending deposit, because this starts once I send an invoice. I've just manually done this because it makes it the easiest, um, so I don't screw up all my invoicing numbers. And then, once the actual couple goes to that invoice and pays an amount, uh, this will complete by itself. Once any deposits made, I'm going to do it just manually for the purposes of this video, but it does work. Um, I've tested it, so we're just going to hit complete, and you'll see here that the deposit's been made. Perfect. So what I can see then is that I've gotten the client through the whole inquiry phase and they made a deposit. Now to actually complete this part of the phase, you actually just have to set it to complete manually as I have asked it to do. In other cases, it might be different for you and that would actually complete all by itself. So I do hope that life cycle stages is going to help you in the long run. It is not a way to automate more of your workflow. It's to give you a better sense of what needs your attention immediately, uh, especially for leads. Especially in my case, I can get a very quick glance at who is sitting at what part of the phase, and maybe they're starting to drop off in either the inquiry, the contract, or they're really taking their time in the deposit phase. If you have a good system set up in your workflows to help you move them through and remind you to make that deposit, then you will be without issue. Um, but they do work hand in hand. One does not replace the other. If you guys have any questions on the 70 Hats group after I post this, don't hesitate to reach out and contact me. Uh, leave a comment. I'll try and answer as best I can. Um, I don't work for 17 Hats. Uh, they're not sponsoring this video by any account. Uh, I'm just doing this as quickly as possible. Um, as I'm busy as I'm sure you are, but just to give you an idea of how this all works together, uh, in my mind anyways. So I hope this has helped and have a great day.